Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Farmina Book Podcast. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. This is not Quicksilver, which I promised you last week. It just, my sister hasn't finished it yet, and I really want to get like her input on it. And so I have waited yet again another week. I'm hoping next week. I'm kind of putting pressure on her, but she does have four kids and she's really busy, and her husband's about to deploy overseas. So we got to give her some grace, which completely understandable, completely understandable. Um, but we will do Quicksilver once she finishes the book and I get her input because it can't be just me that loves it. You know, like I, I see all these rave reviews all over like TikTok and the internet, everything. And so like that validates my feelings, but I need her to finish it to like validate my feelings even more. Because once I have a book that I'm like, oh my gosh, you have to stop everything and read it now. Like I need her to feel that too, because if she doesn't, then I'm like, am I crazy? Like, why do I like this so much? Because we're so similar and I only give her recommendations when, or like that sort of recommendation when I'm like absolutely sold by it. And so I know that she's going to like it. I just have to wait. I just have to wait, which is fine. So that's the update on that. Um, I am, I just started a uh, Dawn of Onyx again by Kate Golden. Um, I'm going to try and read that pretty quickly. The next couple days um maybe this week i don't know my schedule yet but um i am wanting to read the second book of that series so that i can do it on a mini episode because it has been a while since the second one was released so i think it's about time that i do that um i did do an episode on dawn of onyx i honestly don't remember which episode it was but it's in there somewhere so if you wanted to go and listen to it um so that you can kind of be caught up with things i will I'll do a little bit of like back synopsis of it for the mini episode so that we know exactly what we're going into for the second book. Um, so that's currently what I'm doing right now. I'm also working on my August TBR uh, for my Instagram. I did finally finish the prison. Let's see. What is it called? The Prison Healer by Lynette Nani. That was on my TBR for a while and I was in the middle of it for a long time. And finally, I was like, I just I just need to finish it. Like, I'm almost done with it. And I did. And um, it I uh, what are my thoughts on it? It was fine. Um, it was very, very, very slow like good information i would just wish that the last fourth of it would have happened sooner um and maybe like in the middle because there's like a really big twist at the very end literally like last page that i'm like oh oh that changes everything and and then we get nothing i think that there is a second book released um but i just um I don't think I'm going to read it just because the first one was so slow and like there was no spice like at all. And I I require a little bit of spice, you know, like, you know me, require at least a little bit. So I'm glad that I finally finished it. It was a little bit of fantasy. Uh, Actually, it was fantasy. The story is interesting and the characters are interesting. Uh, I just wish it was way quicker paced and and a couple things different but overall it was solid i didn't realize i think i said this last episode or maybe in my mini episode i didn't realize that lana ferguson released another book and i'm very upset that i didn't know about it it's called the game changer i think it's a hockey one which i think is kind of fun that a lot of these authors are going with hockey books and like sports romances kind of changing into that or doing like little one-offs so i'm excited to read that Um, I do have a book that I just picked up. It's called Do Me a Favor by Kathy Yardley. I've never heard of her before. Um, It just popped up on my Amazon like Kindle. So I am excited to read that. And then um, Where We Started by Ashley Munoz. I've never heard of her before. So I'm excited to give it a try. Um, And then today's book, we know if you've been listening to the podcast for the whole time or a while, and have listened to the episodes from Alina Armas, you know, you know that I have like a love-hate relationship with her books, right? Like, and I really, I genuinely, like I sat myself down before I started this book and I was like, okay, I have to go in with a very clear mind. I can't have 
any judgments from like previous books. Like I just need to go in fresh and give it a chance, give this author a chance because I have been so wishy-washy in those episodes where I'm immediately like, nope, don't like this, don't like that. And I like harp on it. So I'm like, I don't want to go in with that thought and with that feeling, you know, like I want a fresh start. So I did. And I, I liked this book. I want to say I liked the characters the most out of all her books. I, if I could rank all her books, I would go The Fiance Dilemma, and then I would go The Spanish Love Deception. Nope, just kidding. I'm already changing. I would go The Fiance Dilemma, and then I would go The Roommate Experiment, and then I would go Spanish Love Deception, and then The Long Game. I really did not like the characters in The Long Game. Did not like them at all. So, um, which is funny because this book plays right off of the long game. Like, it's not required that you read the long game for this book, but I highly, highly recommend it because all the characters that are in the long game are in this book. And you learn more about the main characters in this book that made their appearances in the last book. So highly recommend that you read them like right after each other, just so that you're fresh with everything. Um, but it's been a while. I think she released, let's see, The Long Game last year sometime. And I only read it once and I was able to remember most of the characters and a little bit of what was happening as I was going through the fiance dilemma. So if it's been a while since you read the long game, I don't think you'll need to reread it again to be able to read this book. Um, it, it was very like, you kind of just pick up where things are. So, um, that was very nice. As for the mother sister standard, meh. I don't know, like if they wanted to read it, they totally could. Like if they saw it on my shelf, then I'd be like, yeah, you can read it. Um, I don't think I, would it's not the type of book where I'm like, oh, you have to read this, like have to read this. Like I just did with the Unhoneymooners by Christine Lauren or Christina Lauren. I did take that to Idaho and I was like, you guys have to read this. It's hilarious. So it's, this isn't a book that I would, I would do that with. Um, but if someone asks about it, yeah, I'd be like, yeah, definitely read it. Um, I just won't, ever bring it up I think in a conversation um so there's that I won't say that this is going to be spoiler free which it's hard with these type of books I want to say like the whole episode is kind of going to be spoilers but there's no like twists or turns or anything to really spoil it's just like the plot you know like I'm not going to tell you all the nitty-gritty details I'm just kind of going to go off of like the main synopsis of it and my thoughts and feelings. So if you're like, yeah, I'll, like I'll read the book, but I want to know what's happening. Yeah, like let's let's keep going because um, I'm, I'm going to tell you. But yeah, there's nothing like life altering or like, oh, wow, like nothing like that in this book um, for me to like ruin or spoil or anything like that. So and like I said earlier, this is my favorite of her books, uh, of the four books. I would like it. I really liked the characters. I wanted a little bit more background life information on them. Like, I feel like we got a lot of background of Josie in the long game. Josie is the main female character in this book. Uh, I felt like we learned more about her in the long game than we did this book, which I'm like, okay, if people don't read that book, how are they going to know this stuff? Um, but in the long game, we did find out that Josie is Adeline's sister. Um, they have two different moms, um, but that was the reveal in that book. And so um, it, it picks up from that. She, Josie didn't have like any relationship with her dad, with Andrew Underwood. And even in this book, they have a very tense relationship, which I thought was very real, very raw, because it's not like you're going to just go like, oh, I found out I have this dad. Oh, we're going to be best friends now. Like, that's not going to happen. So this kept it very realistic. And um, with that relationship, I one thing I really did like is Josie is very spunky. Like, she's silly. Like, she says, like, silly things that I'm like, okay, you were fun. Like, you're a fun person. Like, at first I was kind of annoyed, but once I really got to know the character, I was like, okay, you're cool. I like this. Uh, she is the mayor of their little town. And 
I did like her character growth throughout the whole book. Um, she did really grow because she is like a people pleaser, like hardcore people pleaser, always apologizing, always trying to make it better for people. Um, and she really grows and starts to like stand up for herself, which I thought was really great. One thing that annoyed me at first, but then I thought was fun uh, after uh, the initial annoyance was gone, is that when Josie is under pressure, she lies. But they're like really elaborate, like weird lies that it's like, okay, what? Like, how are people going to believe you? Like, uh, and once I realized that, I was like, oh, okay, this is this is kind of this is kind of fun, exciting um, that she just panics and she just like goes off on these really big lies when at first I was like why are you lying like why can't you just say that you are not engaged or why can't you just say this but then I'm like no that like cuts out all the plot of the story all the fun like you see her spunkiness you see her like her, her panic you see how she functions under this pressure like it just really created a better dynamic of who she is and so towards like honestly halfway through the book I was like this is this is a good book this is a cute book I'm really liking this so um I read it on the plane uh to Idaho and I read it a little bit in Idaho and then I finished it on the plane back um so I was just able to like zone in and I did enjoy it I didn't dread reading it I didn't like any like any of that like I I genuinely enjoyed it so uh it was it was a good good move for this um solid plot the pacing could have been a little bit more punchy but overall the timing made sense because it's supposedly supposed to happen over a period of two months there were a couple moments where I'm like okay like come on let's do this or there would be like a cut to a different scene that I'd be like oh wait I wanted to see that like oh Okay, so kind of timing on the the different scene changes was was a little bit off for me. Overall good. I liked the the relationship building with her. Her and Matthew are adorable. We love Matthew. It was spicy, um, but not not that spicy. Like it was a a two out of five. And it was interesting because they don't actually kiss until like 80% through the book. And so it really like builds that tension. And there's a reason why they don't kiss. Um, And it's it's a super cute reason. And so you understand why. But I was getting frustrated because I'm like, can you guys just kiss? Like, can you just, I need a little bit of something. Okay. Um, But they actually do spicy things before they kiss. Like, in a couple scenes they do some spicy things and they don't kiss and it's like oh you're just gonna jump to that okay cool well um fun so I guess you could say that this is like a semi slow burn because of like situations that it it immediately is not spicy obviously um but it does build tension and it it has a really good pacing with that and it kind of makes you a little impatient um because you're like can you hello um but overall good timing and I liked when everything was brought in so it was good um like I said Josie we learn is Adeline's sister um that's where we kind of get into the story that Josie is the mayor of a small town people pleaser um hasn't been a long time since she learned that the big tycoon Andrew uh Underwood was her dad so she is actually uh, has her hand in a jar of jam because she's trying to get this engagement ring off. We learn a little bit into the book that she has been engaged f- four times. She's been engaged four times. And we assume that it's all because of her and it's kind of, it's wrote out that like it was all because of her. Like she's a runaway bride. So it's like, oh, is she going to do this again? Um, she goes to the front door and there's this lady there. Her name's Bobby Shark. She is the PR person that her dad has hired because her story has gotten out. Um, Andrew Underwood, the dad, is having a book wrote about him. And so the media is starting to really catch on to who he is and finding out that he had this long lost daughter that he knew about but didn't acknowledge Um, And then he has his other daughter, Adeline. And so people are just kind of like grasping onto that. And this podcast um, 
they grasped onto Josie's story. And so they're letting everyone know that Andrew Underwood's daughter uh, has been engaged four times. Like, is she going to get engaged again? Like, what's her story? We need to dig into it. So Andrew thought that he would send Bobby to uh, this town and uh, to help Josie kind of help her reputation or not make his look worse, I guess. So opens the door. Bobby's right there. She's very blunt. She's very direct. She's very high powered, like city girl. And Josie's like, hi. Um, And that's when Bobby sees this engagement ring that um, Josie had just tried on. She has four of them Uh, tried on. It got stuck. And so Bobby's like, oh, you're engaged again. Okay. Da, 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 da. Like just talking so fast. And, um, because she's trying to like get ahead of the media, get ahead of everything, wants a story, wants to create the best PR possible. So she's already thinking of like different strategies. And then in the distance, um, she sees Matthew, which Matthew is Adeline's best friend. I don't really remember him in the long game, but apparently he's in there. Um, He uh, was laid off from his job, and so he called Adeline and Cam, um, who Cam was was the soccer star in the long game, and said, like, hey, can I just, like, go to your cabin and just stay for a little bit? He got lost along the way, and he ends up at Josie's cabin. So he's, like, right there. I'm pretty sure he's, like, soaked. I think it's been raining or something. And so she's, like, Matthew like uh and she's like freaking out because she was telling Bobby like this elaborate lie about being engaged and then she's like yes I'm engaged to Matthew there he is and she's like please go along with it to Matthew and he's like oh yeah uh, we're engaged and so that's where it kind of like starts that you're like oh my gosh what are you getting into so finally Bobby leaves and Josie's like, please come in, like, please, like, you're dead on your feet, like, sleep on the couch, and he tells her straight up, like, um, I just got here, like, I don't want to play engaged, if, like, please, like, I don't want to do this, and she's like, no, 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 like, I really need you to do this, like, please, like, I just, we're not actually going to get married, but kind of spiraled, and I have a lot of feelings about my dad coming into the picture, and like just a lot of emotions that she's going through and so he's like okay like we can play engaged for a little bit like just until things settle down like fine and so that starts everything and like their little friendship and he starts to know like her quirks and her smiles and they just like start to fall in love honestly from the first day and it, it is a very, very cute relationship. We like Matthew a lot, like very personable and funny. And he just like has a great sense of humor. And so everything just kind of snowballs from there. Like the the town learns about the engagement. They already know about her other engagements, but they learn about it. And then Andrew wants to fund the wedding. And so then Bobby is like the wedding planner now. And they're like, okay, Andrew is coming to visit like do a party for him. And so Josie's like, well, let me do this like midnight farmer's market, which is such a cute idea. Uh, She wanted to do kind of like this town welcome to him. And so when he's there, he announces that the wedding's going to be in two months. And she's like, oh, okay, sure, sure. Uh, And then, yeah, it continues to snowball from there. Um, Her and Matthew are very close they start to get a little bit spicy you know and you start to really feel like the sexual tension and their cute flirting they have funny like quips back and forth like they have their little arguments it also is escalating the wedding stuff is escalating it overwhelms Josie she doesn't know what she's doing like she's just getting very much like overwhelmed and we do find out that I think at least two of the engagements, the men have called it off. But of course, they're not going to say that in the media. They're going to say it's all on her. And so they're making like polls on if like she's actually going to go through the wedding. And it's just really awful what the media does to her and says about her. 
that she's like, I'm trying not to care, but it's really hard because it's right, right in your face and she's very sensitive. And so over time, her and Matthew, well, over these two months, her and Matthew like really start to have feelings for each other and their friendship. And one day Bobby surprises her to go look at wedding dresses and she has a panic attack because she's like, what if I'm ruining this for him? Like she just, she spirals, basically she's, she spirals. And so Matthew comes and he's able to help like calm her down and they decide like they really do love each other. And then when they walk out, there's like everyone there. And he's actually one, the one that calls off the wedding because like, he's like, we're still together, but it's just really overwhelming. Like this is not the right cho- like chance. And then that's when uh, Josie just opens up about everything. Like this was a hoax. This, this was all this, da, 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 da. And everyone's like, oh, okay. Like, uh, great. Like what's happening? And it kind of goes down, but it, it goes really well. It ends really well. Like there wasn't a huge like spiral of everyone. There wasn't like a third break. Like there wasn't a breakup. Like they were still together, but they were just very understanding of each other, which I really, really liked. And just how they treated each other. And Matthew, we love how protective he is of Josie. And it was just really well written. Like I, I actually really liked this story a lot. And it, the changes, I feel like Alina Armas has really improved throughout her books. Like at least that I've noticed that each of her books that they get better and better. Like her writing was really good in the long game. I just didn't like the characters and just seeing her writing from the first book to now, it's just, she's improved so much. And I've, I've genuinely enjoyed this last book which is really good. Like I was nervous about it, but I do like when authors improve and I do like when um, they change it up, when the storylines change up. And that's the thing, like all three of these books have, or all four of the books have all been different and like relatable content and the characters, like they range. So they're not like all the same and it was just really good. And so at the end of the book, um, that's when Matthew goes on to that podcast and he just sets the record straight and says how he feels and he is on Josie's side and really just like clears the air. And he is so sweet on there, like about Josie and you just like them. You just like the characters a lot. So I do recommend this book. I do. Like if you see it on the shelf and like you are interested, go for it. I definitely, definitely think you should. Out of all of them, again, you might have to read the long game before this one. Um, But yeah, this was a great, great book. Great, solid book. If you like a little small town, I guess it's fake engagement trope. There's a lot of different tropes in this. Um, But it, it all flows well and it all goes great. And there's a lot of funny moments in the book. And I, I genuinely think that you would enjoy it if you picked it up. So that is the fiance dilemma. I hope you enjoy this episode. Let me know if you have any comments, questions, concerns. Um, oh, and remember my many episodes, they are posted on Thursdays strictly on YouTube. So go on there and follow me, subscribe, um, wherever you listen to your podcast episodes, definitely follow there. And, uh, Let me know your thoughts on the book if you've read it um, in the YouTube comments. That's the easiest place that I can see them. So let me know. Let me know your thoughts if if you have picked up this book and or if you want to pick up this book. Definitely let me know. So anyways, I will talk to you guys next week.